Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Train Man, and welcome back to the Zombie Train episode, whatever the hell. Uh, this week, we're, um, actually, we're working on this area between Douglas and High Meadow Park. That's all the episode is dedicated to, and it's also dedicated to me telling you that some things may change right here if you like them to. Okay, I'll get to the, I'll get to what I mean by that in just a second. This week, it's, um, a little bit of terrain work, a lot more ground cover than anything. Uh, that includes textures and trees with this mildly unimpressive tree spline that Kevon used for the area around Douglas. No speed trees, because speed trees are kind of a pain. So, I, uh, I would have done speed trees, but I'm not going to do speed trees. Maybe I'll do speed trees. No, I'm not going to do speed trees. I didn't do any speed trees this episode. I'm not going to continue and go about doing speed trees. Anyways. So... Here we go with this other shade of green that we're using. There are three different shades of base green on the map, and this is where one of them is going to intersect, so I've got to be kind of careful about how I do it. Not 100% sure on how I'm going to do it yet, but I'll get to it. You know, it's it's not the area that I hit up this episode. Uh, I would have liked to get more done, but there's only so much work that can be done in a two-hour stretch. And I don't have a ton of time to do other stuff, because... The uh, Iron Horseman episode is uh, doing a little bit of coming down to the wire uh, because it took a little bit of time to get some of the vocals in, so that's what we're going to start working on once this thing is done. Probably working it for a good few hours. Anyways, speaking of uh, Iron Horseman Chronicles and whatnot... No, wait, no, that has nothing to do with what I wanted to segue into. Um, okay, anyways. So this area, I'm using this unimpressively large 20 meter wide tree spline. It's very dense though, so I like it. But it is really small. Hmm. It's fairly small. Anyways. Um, there's a thing that I want to get to here. Something I could do for the zombie train, which would bring it back more to the reason why it's called the zombie train, first of all. And second of all, maybe provide a little bit more of interesting stuff against the background of me working on this route. See, what I could do is, instead of dedicating uh, 15 minutes to me talking about what I'm working on here, or whatever comes to mind, then I could dedicate, you know, maybe two minutes to, to telling you what's going on here, and then another 13 minutes to a short snippet of a story from the zombie train. Sometime, somewhere, this can be anything ranging from... Uh, the foundation of the train itself, or even predating that, uh, so prior to December 21st, 2012, which is the Great Panic, as it's called, to the um, retirement, which is late, late, uh, and I'm not even entirely sure when that happens, I've never thought that far ahead, but it's after the Zombie Train Incorporated, which is what happens uh, after the, not the war ends necessarily, but the war sort of um, boils off a little bit. It, 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 a lot of time passes, and pretty much everyone who's going to die is dead. <laughs> and we're left with uh, a country that's got that's a shell of its former self. Knowing that, um, knowing that the zombie train and Beta Rail have pulled off some impressive feats of logistics in the past, we are actually asked to spearhead the recovery of the U.S. Um, now it's not an easy task, and that's something that we cover. We end up going to far more than just the U.S., and this includes stealing, um, stealing locomotives from, uh, south and north of the border. Well, not stealing north of the border. North of the border, there's a, I don't know what the hell this texture is. Check that out. Um, north of the border, there's a little bit more civilization. South of the border is straight up just run by cartels at that point, and they really, really don't like us. So, going south of the border is difficult, but we still need those engines. Going north of the border is um, far easier, but the Great White North has a little bit to say about um, coming in and taking things, and I don't mean in the human sense, I mean in the weather sense. Anyways, so the, um, the Zombie Train Incorporated is really just sort of what happens after the, uh, the difficulty of the zombies subsides. It's putting everything back together. Now, there's still... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
there's still a lot of ground to cover. I'm sorry, it's kind of late, and I just had my voice actors here and working on stuff for the last few hours. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, though there's still plenty of story to cover in the zombie train, and I'm even going to redo the stuff that I touched on in the books. Um, the past not being one to change so much. Firefall not being too much to change, either. But, uh, Firefall isn't released, anyways. But the original Zombie Train, uh, once entitled The End of Days, and I'm going to, because I'm changing it, I'm going to rename it. It's just going to be called The Zombie Train. And that needs a lot of change. That needs a lot of edits to make it a little bit more wholesome. It's a very short, it's a very brief story. It's much less a novel as it is a straight-up story. It's, okay, this happened, this happened, this happened. Many of the things still happen in the same fashions as they were told in the original Zombie Train, but the actual detail under which uh, under which they will be described is going to be much, uh, much deeper. So anyways, it's going to be sort of a reflection of the old Admiral Ellis channel, which is once again defunct. Um, and it'll be a way for you guys to understand, A, why it's called a Zombie Train, and for me to get some stuff out there without... Uh, without spending all the time writing those books. And, of course, there's plenty of stories that need to be told that aren't uh, necessarily completely encompassed in the novels. Also, I will say, uh, for those of you interested in getting into the zombie train and understanding what's really going on, pick up a copy of uh, perhaps both The Zombie Survival Guide by Max Brooks and uh, World War Z by Max Brooks. Uh, the Zombie Survival Guide is... Uh, I'm actually not sure if it's less or more important than the than World War Z. It'll help you understand what's going on a little bit more, um, but you don't necessarily need it. But World War Z will help you understand a lot of the context for some of the things that are going on, especially with the Rocky Mountain border, with um, with the uh, the Hero City, and with Yonkers especially. That's a story I can tell. Um, as just an abbreviated... Oh, I'm turning this into a balloon loop because I figured it'd be convenient. Uh, just as an abbreviated uh, point, Yonkers was the... Uh, possibly the worst loss that the United States had ever faced and uh, almost definitely the worst loss that anyone faced in terms of dealing with the Zacks during uh, World War Z. And the zombie train was there. We were there at a, as a promotional stunt, and that's why I shiver every time anyone mentions Yonkers. Even, you know, if they don't mean anything by it. Anyways, that is, um, sort of what I'd be getting into. Oh. I'm tired than I think I am. I'm more tired than I think I am. We're putting up the, uh, the catenaries here, and these don't actually connect. It's just sort of like, let the train ride from one connection to the next. Not particularly hard. Decide to use a random switch stand here, just to uh, just to spice things up a bit. You know, it's one that we haven't seen before, and probably won't see on the rest of the route anywhere. I changed this so that we have less vehicles running, uh, less vehicles going towards the uh, towards the thing over there. We have more vehicles taking the turn and coming this way. Uh oh, auto save. But yeah, so theoretically, if you guys would like me to, I can turn this into, um, instead of just whatever I feel like talking about, turn it into sort of zombie train story time. And I guess that's more befitting of what it originally was than, you know, what it is now. I kept the name because I feel like series need better names than something so bland or so simple as, you know, Train Man Plays... What should I call it? You know, and that's what most of them are right now, because I don't have better names for them, and I don't want to be misleading either. I mean, like, I'm kind of taking after Zisto here. He had, uh, he had his, his, um, Kerbal Space program was called Space Patrol, and, you know, so, stuff like that, you know? So I wanted to make things interesting, so this is called the Zombie Train, and most of you remember why, or at least ask why, and then subsequently are told, but... I think it'd be a great way to uh, to bring the thing back to its roots. And also, I will say most of the stories, if not all of them, will be almost completely ad-libbed. So, if you want to see me ad-libbing 
uh, 15 minutes of story that doesn't have anything to do with the Admiral, that'd be, uh, this wouldn't be a bad place for me to do it. You know, just, just a little while ago, I recounted completely off the top of my head um, the incident with the, Constitu the USS Constitution, the USS Trincomalee, or not the USS, the HMS Trincomalee, and the Cape Cod uh, drawbridge, the Cape Cod Canal drawbridge. And that was, that was something to, ugh, that was, that was a, that was an episode in my life that I've never covered or really even touched on in the books. Even ones, uh, even ones that I haven't written yet, although I think it would fit in the, uh, the Islander Chronicles. Which is something I can talk a lot about. Uh, the Islanders are those on, um, Block Island, the town of New Shoreham, or they, as they later called themselves, the New Republic of Block Island or simply the Islanders, and they become our, you know, one of our earliest and subsequently one of our closest allies throughout the entire war. And eventually they sort of become the foundation of the Zombie Trade Incorporated, although it goes with them and with uh, Donatio, although he's, well, he is um, no longer around at, at the time of the Zombie Trade Incorporated. He ends up... Uh, he dies of mercury poisoning. Anyways, so it, uh, it'd be something to, to get into there. Some interesting sort of something. If you guys want to hear those kind of stories, let me know, and I'll be happy to dish them out. I guess I'm giving you all really teasers right now. Cape Cod Canal Bridge, the Islanders, Quonset, the duel between the USS Constitution and the, uh, what is it, the, um... Uh, the Robert P. Kennedy, I think it is. And it isn't even a gun duel. It's a, it's more of a sailing duel, and it ends interestingly. You think a museum ship has that much ammo? Hmm. Could have had a battleship. But those, um, those, uh, those late battleships are hell to run. Especially... The problem is, these guys are all run by, like, Bunker Sea Oil and stuff like that. There's no place to get Bunker Sea Oil. It's a, you know, it's a refined commodity. And it's in short supply, and it gets used up really quickly, along with all the other kinds of oil. Uh, except for, of course, crude. Because nobody uses crude for anything. And, uh, you know, from, from right at the beginning of World War Z, we ended up losing almost all of our refining capabilities, which is why the Navy hoards the nuclear fleet. Ooh, sorry, there's a pop there. The Navy hoards the nuclear fleet in the Pacific to hunt down a handful of Russian subs that went unaccounted for. And also just kind of to keep the peace, so to speak. But, you know, we're stuck with sailing ships and whatever we can work up with coal-fired steamships, and the USS Olympia, if you guys have ever seen her or heard of her, I think she's in Philadelphia Harbor, is um, one of the most important assets that we end up getting our hands on. I mean, once she's running again, she becomes uh, one of our heaviest firepower dealers, although at that point, uh, by, the time, by the time we get her up to snuff, she's actually used in the recovery mission for uh, basically the missing pieces of the oil refining uh, systems. You know, there's a lot of everything computerized or even necessarily highly mechanical becomes virtually useless. Uh, pretty much everything powered by electricity is rendered inoperable, and everything that runs on oil is toast. It's just how that works. Until we get our oil, uh, until we get our oil refining capabilities back, which is one of the first. Uh, one of the first exceptionally difficult missions that the Salmitrain Incorporated ends up undertaking. Possibly one of the more interesting ones. But we've got plenty of stuff going on. I could recount the Toronto Rail Lands and the uh, breaking of the Siege of Toronto. I could recount the, uh, well, the snapping of the coupler of 3254. That was an interesting happenstance. Um, I could even recount uh, the immense gift 
that uh, that was given to me. But those are all in the plan for future books as well. And I could go to the future, past, anything. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know. And I'll see you next week. Train Man out.